This is courtesy of DJ Mag. Um, DJ polls and anything to do with dance music when it comes to awards and all that sort of stuff has kind of, it feels like, suffered a bit of a reputational damage. It feels like people have kind of gone off it. I guess no one wants to be in competition. No one wants to say who's best and who's good and who's bad for whatever reason, even though we do do it every single weekend we kind of vote with our feet we vote with our money um we vote with our bodies right in terms of where we decide to go out on the weekend who we decide to go back what places we're going to go spend money at the drinks what money to buy drinks at the bar we kind of do decide who's best and who's not but for some reason publications um especially in dance music seem to be a little bit nervous about doing so i have my theory and my theory has always been when resident advisor took the dj poll off i think a lot of it had to do number one with that mama snake interview mama snake i think did an interview or did a mix an interview with ra where she kind of just started going on a flipping tangent about i don't know something that didn't have nothing to do with her playing music and then talking about what she's studying in university and then it basically kind of led you people to and it basically had people reacting very negatively to her interview which then led to people thinking the comments were being harassing um and were obviously trying to i don't know make her feel i don't know yeah but basically people felt as if the comment the comment section was toxic on ra which then led the comment section to get closed and then soon after that or maybe just before that the dj polls also went away so any kind of community any kind of i don't say accountability but any kind of recognition of people's good work or what people actually like to listen to completely vanished and i think the reason why that happened partly when it comes to dj polls is i think those dj polls back in the day they significantly contributed to people's success and some people's maybe demise for instance i don't think Dixon would have been as popular as he is now if he didn't win the DJ the resident advisor DJ kind of uh, top thing four times in the year I think he came number one four times in a row something like that back to back right he wouldn't have been successful as he is now if he didn't win that that was recognition from everybody in the scene that regardless of who the DJs are around at the moment the Ben Clocks the Ben UFOs the DVS ones if he kept if he keeps getting voted at number one he's definitely got to be really good and then you go and see him play and you're like okay this guy is really amazing you I don't like the music but in terms of being a proficient DJ and being able to select tunes and sequence them together he's really in a league of his own so those kind of things help to cement people and of course people like Ricardo Villalobos it kind of extended his kind of um, legend because he was always in around the top 50 top 30 top 20 Jamie Jones came off the back of that Seth Trucks to get a career off the back of that so I'm sure those guys went from making a couple of thousand a gig to going into like the 10s the 20s the 30s maybe to 100,000 a gig off the back of that DJ post so it was very 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 powerful and i'm assuming agents and bookers and also all, the, all those guys are also getting nervous because some of their clients were maybe on the wrong end of those things um maybe not getting some good responses from people on the comments when they were like oh how this guy up up on that list da, da, da. and i'm assuming a lot of promoters basically based their selection policy on who to book for the events mostly based on that list so i can understand why resident advisor felt way too responsible for the success and demise of people's careers they thought you know what we're getting nervous we just pulled out of it but i think in general we do need some sort of reckon some sort of platform that provides recognition for people's hard work and also recognizes that some people are just basically here yeah, some people are here it's just what it is effect of life and also acknowledgement of the fan base too so you can know okay cool i'm not mad for thinking i rate this person because i saw them at the festival because they acknowledge them on their platform too by saying yeah us as working industry us as journalists us as writers we have also seen this person do great things it's also quite nice you know? i mean it's a quite little um what's that thing called it's a good um and also confirmation bias but it's good to kind of have your um suspicions or your inklings or your likes to be somewhat validated by people in the media i, I don't mind it and one of the thing i wanted to point out was this one from dj mag which was um dj mag's best of british awards obviously focusing here or mostly on the uk stuff and they voted one of my favorite clubs as being one of the best small clubs in the uk but i think it's a little bit of a slight i think it should be listed as the best club in the uk hands down forget small um uh, forget the scale or forget how many people can fit in there i definitely think it's again from spending many many years more than 10 years clubbing in this city clubbing in this country putting on events djing myself i definitely have to say it definitely is in my opinion the best club in the country by a country mile and it's not even close it really really isn't and if you're wondering what the club is if you're wondering i guess you know where you're talking about it of course is none other than fold in my hometown of canning town ironically enough which is why i think there should become there should be a time in the future hopefully when you know i get better 
um, or I'm at the level that needs to be acknowledged in that regard. But it definitely needs to come at a point in time where I'm able to play a fold for sure. It just needs to tie that story in because I basically grew up around there. I'm from originally from Canning Town. I went to school, what, what, specifically, yeah, rec secondary school, I went to Royal Docks. Um, I know that area at the back of my hand. So to have that place open in some way that I call home is pretty cool and it? it's pretty sick um i first went to fold in 2018 when it very first opened and like some people who have suddenly turned into club kids in the last couple of years um i've actually basically been there since it first opened the stores at the very first party i think it was about august time absolutely electric it hasn't really changed that much on the inside for the most part they've obviously added some acoustic things here and there there's some maybe paint jobs have been changed here and there but for the most part the idea of it having the shutters on the side where the light seeps through early in the morning the amazing sound the kind of simple layout of it just being a square and a dance floor the toilets around the back and the lockers it's always been like that since i first went there and just the idea of going up the stairs um the outside it just kind of reminded me weirdly enough i think maybe again makes sense because i think the founders um have kind of a lot of experience of going out um in kind of the continent and being kind of plugged in with the georgian scene and being plugged in also georgian Tbilisi scene and being plugged in with the berlin people so it makes sense they kind of had that kind of feel to it. it kind of reminded me of some sort of um club that i would have kind of stumbled across in the depths of wedding maybe back in the day in berlin and it was the probably the closest thing that you could get to that sort of feeling and i think when it first opened they did kind of lean too heavily on the idea that, oh, we're inspired by Berlin, we're inspired by Bergheim and shit. And maybe it didn't really have much of an identity, but which makes sense when you're first starting, you have to kind of find your feet. And it's little by surely, but yeah, slowly, but surely over time, they kind of formed their own identity and it really turned into kind of one of the better places to go and club in London on the weekend without even needing to check who's on the lineup. It can be a little bit one note in terms of the people that play there all the time you can kind of basically assume nine times out of ten it's going to be techno obviously sometimes it can be some other things i'm sure they do dub nights drum and bass nights and some other things there too but for the most part people only really think of it as a techno club but one of the strong parts of it again this is coming from me being a clubber for 10 plus years and putting on nights and djing myself one of the kind of good things about london is that on any given night you can go and see anybody play any sort of genre right it does anything that you like you can go see someone play like you can go to the underworld and see someone play metal you can go to some cafe or some bar in the middle of dawson and hear someone playing indie there's nights on for whatever taste that you need but sometimes if you're gonna go to bigger clubs they're very reliant on having bigger names so if they don't have big names playing it's a little bit of a hit and miss in terms of what's going to be on on that night so it's quite cool to see a club like fold open up and others as well in london too like even the cause in some respect where they're able to kind of focus in on a niche focus in on who they basically appeal to maybe not genre mostly about kind of who they appeal to the kind of person that is into certain types of music and just focus in on that so that what happens is that every weekend when you go you're not expecting to see a big name if anything you're there to support up and coming club nights and again with their connections to people in mainland europe and shit they have people flying over from berlin and stuff and other parts of europe and to bring in their sort of like um well-known night or kind of night that's only known for people in the scene and bringing it over here into the uk and sort of exposing their artists the uk scene and do a little bit of a swap that way and it really really good and it kind of brings out the best in clubland and i think if i'm honest again i think people are honest too if they say i don't think we had that many club kids prior to fold opening i think the club kids scene was maybe relegated to some alternative kind of um, queer nights underground ones in soho and shit but i think the emergence or re-emergence of sort of like the alternative club kid queer scene lgbtq thing was mostly a fold thing where you saw people coming out dressed to the nines really showing out dancing their tits off and just really all about the music really all about the vibes and definitely Ford played a really big part in it so when they were when they awarded them the best small club in london or the best small club in the uk i thought it was a great award great recognition but i do think it needs to be said that it probably is the best club in general in the uk i think the best large club went to print works a place i still haven't been but everyone keeps telling me it's flipping amazing but i think overall if you have to kind of marry up the time that is open the bar the idea that you can basically have a locker and you can put your stuff in there safely 
um, the connections as well to it. Since Canning Town, you can get a train, a 24 hour tube when that's open. There's basically cabs all around that area. It's quite near to most places if you want to go in terms of, in terms of cab back home. It's a pretty safe ish area because it's next to a residential bit on the other side of the tracks. It's a really great place. All around the staff are really amazing for the most part. Um, even though the, the, the security outside is a bit excessive in terms of searching, but it is what it is in London. You can't really avoid that. Once you get inside, you're basically be left alone to get up to whatever you want to get to. They've got a great little smoking area that you can kind of look out into the flipping factories and get all the, you know, the, the, that kind of view of flipping Canning Town in East London. It really is great. And again, like I said, programming wise, it definitely is awesome because you don't need to look at the lineup. You just go trust what they're booking and basically have a great time. And then, of course, they've got the un, un what's it called? The unsound unfold nights on a Sunday, the way they basically just promote residents and friends of friends, which is always good. And I think now they're starting to push residents there playing more often, you know, going forward in the future. So again, like I said, for tying with my story, me growing up in East London, me growing up specifically in, in Canning Town, there definitely is going to come a time in the future where I will have the opportunity to play there. And um, that definitely is going to happen to tie that story together. It's not something I'm chasing, but when it does happen, I'll be amazing. But again, as a punter, just as a fan, um, I've always been a big fan of Fold ever since I went there in 2018. I think I actually made a video about it as well. Um, or So I covered it on a podcast, so definitely check that out if you haven't before. But read quickly the article here regarding Fold. It says waking up on uh, sorry waking up the road sorry walking up the road to fold feels like a scene from a dystopian sci-fi movie the dealer rumbles by a huge skips heave with industrial material derelict pub is en route and adds to the forgotten feel that permeates this pocket of canning town it's mad to see canning town written like this in such a glowing terms of dance music because this area was it's where i basically grew up in it i had many fights here a couple of first kisses like oh yeah yeah i used to run around that area all the time doing my little 5ks going to school like oh it's so cool man but further on fold sits unassumingly in the middle of the wasteland it could be another warehouse either in use of uh, use or defunct inside however lasha georgelia aka voice drone hey how you pronounce her name georgelian Giuliani, as I name, has cultivated one of the London's most essential electronic music and art spaces since 2018. We are artists led. This space is built for artists in our community, and we are continuously evolving and growing. So Co-founder Lasher tells DJ Mag, um, "Our aim is to build a new type of space which supports a wide range of local emerging and international acts for international music to for for electronic music for more experimental." and immersive audiovisual arts as well as the champion inter interdisciplinary collaboration he already said it there local emerging people hopefully that includes me and not just people that have moved here recently and just decided to move to Canyon Town for the low rents which a lot of people did but you know I'm from there bring me in man bring me in it continues here said it helps that surrounding area has remained virtually unchanged since um, launching we are working with UM Council to grow and expand and provide more opportunities for local communities to get involved in what we do and we need to partner with local schools and our music groups within Newham great is here we are aiming to become a cultural hub within the community and collaborate and work with the locals to inject inclusive ethos in our sister direction there of course because that area is there's a lot of gangs there there's a lot of kids that are unruly that don't really go to school and shit imagine if they could plug them in and provide them with an avenue that maybe would expose them to a completely different side of the world because imagine it's quite symbolic yeah you come from one side of um canning town star lane you cross over the bridge past the DLR and then you go into another side of Canning Town that's completely different, right? Like in terms of the people, sexual orientation, where they're from, all this stuff's completely different. So it kind of opens your eyes up completely to this other side of the world. But then at the heart of it, they're just people like you and you're just people like you and I, Joe. You know what I mean? Trying to have fun, express themselves, have a good time, let their hair down. And I think if you're able to expose people to that, you know, myself included, when I lived when I grew up in Canning Town, all it took for me to be exposed to that was magazines. Magazines and documentary. Suddenly I saw people that looked like myself enjoying this other thing that I was also interested in and it kind of opened my horizon. Now suddenly the world became a lot more bigger to me. It wasn't just where I was from. It wasn't just E16, E15, E13. It was a lot more bigger. And I guess that's what it takes, just one little door to be a jar and then suddenly your eyes come become wide with possibilities because it says here um as well as hosting international talents and labels like curtis isthmus stay forever hydrolex and rupture again curtis and isthmus i've been to a few of their parties there um, it's club owners queer Sunday daytime party unfold and it's residents who have perhaps most contributed to the rise of success of the club definitely agree with that one unfold is not just a party to us it's political this is just expressed through our residents our resident artists but also through the placing of the decks in the middle of the room to, to democratize the relationship between the artists and the audience and create a realistic atmosphere 
great to hear. Reflecting on the win for the best small club, Lash are grateful for the significant boost of staff morale after everything we have been through over this pandemic. It's almost unbelievable that we've managed to make it through. We have put our blood, sweat and tears into keeping the best place alive, making forward what it is. And so having some recognition for our hard work is definitely appreciated. So yeah, definitely agree with that one. Like I said, I think it's a bit of a understand. I think it's a bit of a, it, it's a little bit, um, you know, it should be voted the best club in the UK. But again, I guess you have to give, we want to give everyone recognition, small or big, maybe have small, big and medium too. But I think overall, in terms of what they're doing, in terms of batting above, way above their league, in terms of how they're competing with the other clubs and big, big lineups and all that sort of shit. It's amazing. Like again, I've seen, I've seen Richie Horton play there. I've seen people I've never heard of play there. You know what I mean? It's like they've covered all the flipping remits. You know what I mean? Every single area you want to cover, you can basically see there. One of the best one nights actually there was obviously the first party, 2018. And then the second one was definitely the Innovision label night. That was legitimately one of the funnest times I've ever had in there. Like have you seen, and you could tell the Innovision label crews and the DJs and stuff when they came in they were really blown away by the atmosphere and the club too because it reminded them I guess of some of the better clubs they've seen in the continent it wasn't as kind of glitzy as a, as a print works would be or whatever or an XO wire but in terms of it just being a raw club that people could vibe to it was amazing and legitimately I remember seeing videos of not video, being there actually forget the videos seeing Dixon that was legitimately one of the first times I've seen Dixon legitimately like have bare fun behind the decks like he was super rocking out swaying from side to side loving every minute of it um definitely definitely a great time i want to have to admit that and i think even someone like a jimmy jaws who's kind of obviously gained prominence now on Innovision for his releases as a dj he might have got a lot more of he might have been more recognized via that Innovision label night forward than any other time that might have been his instruction people thought oh this guy's really sick and it kind of went from there but that Innovision night and obviously the first party they had the first dance that was some of the most great times I've had in that club standing on that I think I don't know if they still got it they've got a little platform next to the window where the where the kind of light seeps through they can stand on two and kind of go crazy it's just all about the done again I'm sure there's a green room that does exist I'm sure there's places that you can go and have some fun on your own privately but it's one of the only clubs where legitimately the place that matters is the dance floor no one cares about anything else everyone just wants to be on that flipping dance floor going crazy and again I can't have any more great words to say about that place man definitely one of my favourite spots to go and go crazy at and somewhere that I'll be again on Friday I can't wait I can't wait Um, 